Welcome back to another episode of Real Life Stories in Livestock Farms. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about a story uh, from a dairy farm. This story actually happened about uh, 15 or 16 years ago. Back in the day, I was an animal nutritionist. I was visiting dairy farms and I got a call from a farmer. They complained about a drop in milk yield and uh, I visited the farm and I started investigating the feed formula and I saw they are using an extra amount of a feed additive called monensin. Monensin is a feed additive. It's from a group called uh, Ionofer, and I'm going to talk about that today. So, back to our story. What happened was they heard from a farmer that using monensin can increase milk production. But the problem was they used extra amount of monensin and by that they saw a drop in milk fat. And because back in the day they were paid uh, based on milk fat as incentive, so they were using that amount of incentive because of dropping milk fat. And they saw, okay, uh, what should we do? They started adding wheat straw on the diet. And that group of cows, actually, they were uh, in early lactation. It means that it was the phase after parturition. And in that phase, you should not use any bulky feed like straw they they thought if they can add straw on the diet uh, it can increase milk fat to some extent it was true but as i said we are not allowed to add any bulky stuff to um, the cow's diets in early lactation because already their feed intake is low right so you're not going to uh, lower their feed intake by adding, you know, um, feed stuffs, bulky feed stuffs, uh, high in NDF and uh, PENDF, physical effective NDF. And I thought, I, I think I have talked a little bit about, you know, these... Uh, concepts in one of my videos uh, about dairy cow nutrition. I'll try to post the link up here and you can uh, have a look and, you know, see uh, some concepts around dairy cow nutrition over there. So let me just share my screen with you and I have prepared some slides about this story. So, as I said, problem was dropping milk yield during early lactation in Holstein dairy cows. And, you know, during the early lactation after parturition, if you look at the milk production curve, it's supposed to go up. It's the physiology of animal because the animal is spending resources from uh, its body to put in the milk, to put into the milk and increase the milk production. It's really weird to see drop in milk production during early lactation. But the problem was using that bulky feed. And why? As I said, when I uh, inspected the ration formula, I saw overusage of molensin in their concentrate. And 
because it uh, ended up, you know, in a drop in milk fat, they started using uh, wheat straw to increase milk fat, but it didn't work and it actually dropped milk production. And it was really tough situation. So what is monensin? As I said, monensin is a fig additive from a group called iron offer. So this group of uh, fig additives, actually the mechanism of action is really uh, around uh, bacteria in the rumen. They change uh, some uh, ions uh, concentration or gradient across the cell wall of bacteria, for example, sodium or proton. And by that, they can shift the microbial uh, population in the rumen. And usually they kill uh, gram-positive bacteria. They have some benefits. For example, they can decrease the methane production. And by that, they can increase feed efficiency, which is good or they can increase uh, propionate in the uh, rumen. So, but on the other hand, they can decrease acetate if we overuse this feed additive. So just as an overview around the rumen metabolism to, you know, uh, have a better understanding around the mechanism of action of monensin. Let's talk about VFA or volatile fatty acids in the rumen. Overall, we have a three main VFAs in rumen, propionate, acetate, and butyrate. Propionate usually uh, travels to liver and it can be converted to glucose. And by that, it can be a precursor for lactose or milk sugar, and it can increase uh, milk production as well. On the other hand, when you know you have a high production of propionate in the rumen, and subsequently high amount of glucose uh, production in the liver, uh, actually it can have um anti ketosis activity as well and we know during early lactation dairy cows especially high producing dairy cows are prone to uh, ketosis and if we can increase the amount of propionate in the rumen and subsequently amount of glucose in the liver actually we are preventing the risk of ketosis, which is good. And monensin can, you know, do this for us. Um, but on the other hand, as I said, if you use extra amount of uh, monensin, it can decrease acetate because acetate, as you can see, it's a precursor for milk fat in mammary glands. So when you have reduction in acetate uh, concentration, it means that uh, you will end up with a drop in milk fat as well. So, and butyrate, you know, it can be used as energy source in rumen wall, rumen, uh, those cells on the rumen wall. So, to put in, you know, in a nutshell, I would say any feed additive like monensin that can increase propionate during early lactation is a good choice to support milk production and to prevent some metabolic disorders like ketosis. But if you overuse it, it can uh, disrupt the, you know, Mm, rumen fermentation. For example, it can decrease acetate 
and by that it can uh, decrease the milk fat as well. So, monensin inclusion rate in a concentrate is 300 milligram per day per cow. And please pay specific attention to um, the inclusion rate of each feed additive and try uh, to use it in the you know standard range. And if you go over standard range, you will end up with some problems. I heard this from a professor when I was a student in bachelor science or master science. So they said a biological system is different from a mechanical system. What does it mean? Look, if your car has a problem, you can take it to a mechanic. He will say, lift up the hood and he will do some fixing over there, you know, and then they will fix your car and it's ready to hit the road. But it's not true in case of biological system. If you make a mistake in diet formulation and cause any disruption in production, like milk production, or in terms of poultry, let's say egg production, it's really tough to return the animal to the normal situation. Because animal doesn't have, you know, a fixable engine. It doesn't have a hood. You can say, lift it up. I'm going to put some wrench over there and fix it for you. No, it's a biological system. You need to pay specific attention. Fixing a biological, fixing a problem in a biological system will take time and it's really difficult to return it to the normal level. So that's why we really need to pay more attention to animal nutrition and make ourselves familiar with concepts in animal nutrition. For example, as I said, you know, concentrations of those volatile fatty acids in the rumen. We really need to understand what the balance level is over there. And we need to keep it in mind when we are formulating diets and when we are adding any uh, feed additive or any uh, feed ingredients. Okay, so this video was not about poultry. My, most of my videos are about poultry and I know my poultry friends have asked some questions uh, and I need to make some videos answering those questions. But uh, today I, I was thinking about this story which happened around, as I said, 15 years ago. And I just wanted to share it with our folks that are interested in ruminant nutrition. I'd appreciate it if you can press the like button and subscribe to my channel. And let me know if you have any questions or any comments down there in the comments area. By that, have a great day wherever you are, and I'll see you in the next episode. Take care.